Well, greetings and welcome to Bethel's Worship Time. It is great to be with you. I am Tim, if you don't know me, pastor here at Bethel, and it is great to spend a little time with you as we go before the Lord and we worship a holy God. As we begin our worship service, I invite you to pause as we reflect on some music that, that is going to be played for us here.
As we continue our service, for those of you who are in our congregation, I want to remind you that uh, we have equipped you by the internet to uh, continue to give your tithes to the church. And you can go to www.bethelthomasville.com. You'll find a donation page on the website and it will uh, give you instructions on how you can mail in an offering if you would like or as well um, to make an offering by internet with a, a bank card um, here as well. It is time for us to lift up our prayer concerns. And I know that we've had some uh, items published and, and uh, folks' names were sent out on the phone tree as well. And I'll remind you of some here. Don and Dolores, Eva, I'm a Jean, Zeb, Tammy and Gary, Wavel, Ernest, uh, Wade, and Pat. We'll be praying for them, and I'm sure the Lord will give you many more to put on your list as well. Because we've had such a, um, a crisis that's happened in our nation, uh, obviously um, it's caught the attention of a lot of people, and one of those persons was our bishop, and he sent out a letter to us pastors this week to, uh, to give us encouragement and to pray for us, and I, I want to thank him for that. And in his email, he sent out an idea of praying uh, a prayer that comes out of the uh, book of worship here in our church. And I thought that was a splendid idea. I looked at the prayers that he suggested, and um, I'm going to pray these prayers over our nation and our congregation here. And I invite you now to pray with me. God of all ages, in your sight, nations rise and fall and pass through times of peril. Now, when our land is troubled, be near to judge and save. May leaders be led by your wisdom. May they search your will and see it clearly. If we have turned from your way, reverse our ways and help us to repent. Give us your light and your truth. Let them guide us. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. A prayer for our leaders. O oh God, as you anointed leaders and called prophets of old, lead us to recognize our true representatives and authentic leaders, men and women who love your people and can walk with them, who dream their dreams and strive to accompany them to their common goal, in your fire, with your spirit, embolden and commission us to transform our political system, to serve your people, and to bring real glory to your name. And Father, it is our prayer that you would establish your sovereign will upon our nation that you would lead our nation into healing and into your peace. And it is in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Wow, what an unsettling week we have experienced as a nation. On top of just saying goodbye to 2020, which seemed to be a year of constant crisis. This week I was asked if there was any hope for our nation. And as the conversation continued, was, was there any hope for the church? You know, there is a lot going on. There are a lot of things going on in our world that would cause us to give up hope. But I want to encourage you today to grab hold of the hope in Jesus Christ and not let go Maybe we could shout out like Jacob when his world came crashing down and then he found himself wrestling with God. And he said, I will not let go until you bless me. I want us to remember that generations before us suffered in various crises. They too have walked through many fragile times. Our nation has seen great division in our history before. Past generations also saw moves of God. It wasn't always easy, but through the move of the Holy Spirit, healing and reconciliation came. 
We can find these same stories of national and religious brokenness throughout scriptures. And thank God we can go to these scriptures to help us respond to our current events. In the midst of crisis, it is natural to deal with anxiety and fear. It's natural to question our current reality. It's natural to question where God is in this mess. I think today I want to ask what I think is a, a big question. And the answer to that question will decide if we can live in security or live as a people of chaos. That question is, does God remember us? The word remember is in the Bible a lot. As a matter of fact, there are several instances where Scripture tells us God remembered. That seems uh, an odd statement when our theology said God knows everything. So let's wrestle with this word remember and this question, does God remember us? First, what does it mean in the Bible that God remembered? In every instance of God remembering, we see that it always included an action. God never forgets his promises or his people. He is the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, and the creator of the universe. He doesn't suffer from memory lapses. The phrase God remembered appears in the Bible lots. I have a, a few questions for you. What does God remember actually mean? Does noting that God remembered uh, something also imply that God forgets things? And how can that be since God is perfect? I want us to explore the meaning of the term God remembered and how it applies to us today. What does remember mean? Well, in the Old Testament, the word remember, such as in Genesis, and God remembered Noah, remember means to recall, to have at the front of one's mind with a, a focus on responding in an appropriate manner, to act on someone's behalf. The Bible uses the term God remembered numerous times. For example, the passage we just looked at, Genesis 8-1, God remembered Noah and all the wild animals and the livestock that were with him in the ark and sent a wind that caused the flood waters to recede. In Genesis 30-22, we are told God remembered Rachel, that's Jacob's wife, and enabled her to conceive. And you remember her child, Joseph, uh, was a man of God who saved his people even after they sold him to Egypt into slavery. In Exodus 2, 24, God heard the, the groaning of his people, Israel, who were slaves in Egypt, and he remembered his covenant with Abraham, with Isaac, and with Jacob, setting them free through Moses. Later, after Jesus' death and resurrection, an angel of the Lord appeared to Cornelius, a non-Jew, and told him, God had heard his prayer and remembered his gift to the poor. That's in Acts 10. God then sent the apostle Peter to share the gospel with Cornelius and his, his loved ones, and they believed and received the Holy Spirit, leading Peter to baptize them even though they were Gentiles. And later in the apostle John's uh, revelation message, we are told God remembered the evil deeds of Babylon and poured out his wrath upon her. That's in Revelation 16 and also in 18. In every instance of God remembering, we see in the Old Testament that it always includes an action. For example, God remembered Noah, then made the waters recede. God remembered Rachel, then opened her womb. And years later, hearing the, the Hebrew cry, for, for rescue, God remembered his covenant with, with their ancestors and rescued them. Raised in the faith, King David knew God brought action when he remembered someone or something. So David's cry to the Lord in, in the Psalms was just as much cries for effect as for affection. For instance, in Psalms 25, David begs God, Remember, Lord, your great mercy and love. Remember me. In Psalms 25, 6, 7, this is a cry for help. 
for rescue, for deliverance, not just a cry for love. It wasn't just King David who cried out for the Lord's remembrance. Asaph pleaded with the Lord to remember the nation uh, you purchased long ago, the people of your inheritance, and deliver them from Psalm 74, 2. And in Psalms 106, 4, the psalmist begs, Remember me, Lord, when you show favor to your people. Come to my aid when you save them. He asked for rescue, not just kind thoughts. In the New Testament, the Greek word for remember means to remember or recall, but it too seems to imply actions. Uh, uh, God's remembering brought the Holy Spirit on one and, and his wrath upon another. Uh, well, how does that apply to us today? Well, we are to remember too. God never forgets his promises or his people. He is the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, and the creator of the universe. He doesn't suffer from memory lapses, but God makes it clear that we, as his people, are to continue to cry out to him with prayer and petitions, with praise and thanksgiving. In Isaiah 62, verses six through seven, we're reminded, I have posted watchmen on your walls, Jerusalem. They never are to be silent day or night. You who call on the Lord, give yourselves no rest and give him no rest till he establishes Jerusalem and makes her the praise of the earth. And Jesus also told his disciples that after he has left, he would send the Holy Spirit to live within them to teach you all things and will remind you of everything I have said to you from John 14, verse 26. And in Luke chapter 23, verses 39 through 43, one of the criminals crucified with Christ, Jesus begged Jesus to remember him in heaven. He sought forgiveness and he received it. When we ask for forgiveness, talk with God in prayer, take communion or otherwise engage with the Lord, we are in essence calling his attention upon us. He sees all, he knows all, and we must trust he will act on our behalf. Now it's time for us to remember. Here are a few scriptures inviting us to remember and to cling to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. In the night, Lord, I remember your name, that I may keep your law, Psalms 119.55. I remember the days of long ago. I meditate on all your works and consider what your hands have done, Psalms 143, verse 5. Zion said, the Lord has abandoned me. The Lord has forgotten me. Can a woman forget her baby who nurses at her breast? Can she withhold compassion from the child she has born? Even if mothers were to forget, I could never forget you. Look, I have inscribed your name on my palms. Your walls are constantly before me. Your children hurry back while those who destroyed and devastated you depart. Look all around you. All of you gather, uh, all of them gather to you as surely as I live, says the Lord. You will certainly wear all of them like jewelry. You will put them on as if you were a bride. Yes, your land lies in ruins. It is desolate and devastated, but now. And I'll let you read the rest of Isaiah 49 to get the end now. Again, I want us to be encouraged in um, the tragedies that we've witnessed, just the struggles that have been almost a, a year long now uh, with, with COVID, with uh, government um, uh, I don't know, instability, and uh, just continues. Um, and, and the frustration that comes out of that from our public, from both spectrums or a wide spectrum of, of uh, political views. And it can be disheartening to see the, the crisis that we seem to just continue to go through. But this is not a time to say um, in our hearts that God is not for us, that God is not listening to us to, to give up. This is a time for us to cling to God and seek his face and to hear his spirit speak to our hearts. 
and give us the ministry that we need to go out into this world that is so broken and so desperate for God's peace. I pray God's blessings, his peace be upon you. Amen. Once again, I want to thank you for coming and visiting uh, here in our, our internet worship service. And I trust that God has blessed you in our time together. And the sermon talked about uh, um, God remembering us. And I hope uh, you know that God does know your name. He remembers you. He does not forget you. But I want to also encourage you, uh, this past week, I think uh, our Bible study speaks to some of the things that went on in, in the nation as well. We've been studying Isaiah for um, about 12 to 15 weeks here. I can't remember the lesson number, but it was this past Wednesday. Uh, Isaiah, we moved into Isaiah chapter 40. And I think that is a, a good message. It's a good short message for you to maybe pick up as well. And again, I believe it speaks to a time of crisis that was going on in Isaiah's time. There was a tremendous amount of crisis. As a matter of fact, the nation was falling apart. And uh, in Isaiah 40, God intervenes and moves in and begins to reestablish Israel as a nation. And I think uh, we might can find some uh, wonderful insights in that. And so I want to encourage you to uh, as you have time to go to our website and um, maybe take a look at the Isaiah lesson for this past Wednesday. God bless. I pray God's peace be with you, fill you with his hope, with his grace, that you may share his love with a world that is so discouraged. Amen.